Hi there. In this lecture, we see Bobby Fischer playing against Robert Wade. I've actually had the privilege of playing Robert Wade in Blitz Chess at a cafe called Checkers many years back. He was very, very strong at Blitz. Yes, he crushed me. <laughs> so Robert Wade, apparently, also, he helped Bobby Fischer in preparation for the 1972 match. So he became a good friend of Bobby Fischer. So we see here E4 from... Fisher, Bob Wade plays e5. We see knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, white castles, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, black castles, c3, d6, h3, and now slightly less usual move than knight a5 and other plans like that, queen d7. So it's interesting to see how Fisher reacts to this particular setup. He plays actually d4, and after rook e8, knight bd2, bishop f8, Fisher is actually tempted here to gain space. He doesn't usually, in quite a lot of the closed, closed row the pairs games, he doesn't usually close the center, but he closes it here. And perhaps Robert Wade wanted to play it like a king's engine defense, with a sort of rolling attack on the king side. Uh, it's best if the knight goes to e7, it seems. If it goes to a5 here. After bishop c2, white's got a strong plan of a4. For example, and well, b4 first, then an a4. This is just very, very pleasant. So the knight goes back to e7. And we have knight f1, and now g6, as though black's interested in fin kettling and, and playing for f5. But against this very ambitious plan here, Fisher charges on the queen side with c4, so already there's an idea of a c5 break. But not only that, in this particular position, c4 has ex the extra venom. If black dared take, and black didn't do this, then bishop a4 is really annoying. If black has to play c6, you know, this is a, a nasty pin. This is a nasty use of the d5 square. White's sitting very, 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 very well. So we see uh, bishop g7, but now immediately without further ado, c5, because that e5 pawn is a bit loose. We see knight h5. If d takes c5, knight takes e5, this doesn't look intuitively that great of the queen f3. And in practice, yeah, there, I mean, it's a dangerous position for black to be in, losing that e5 pawn. So we see actually black trying to keep it closed, keep the e5 pawn on, and knight h5 is played. <clears throat> and now we see a4, pardon me. So d takes c5 here, a takes b5, bishop b7 is played. If queen takes b5, yeah, there's an annoying bishop a4 resource skewing queen and rook. So bishop b7, and we see b takes a6, bishop takes a6. Bishop e3 targeting c5. Black's structure is a bit fragmented here with these pawns. We see c4, and now bishop a4. And this takes the sting out of any black attack, really. Getting rid of black's light square bishop here makes white more solid on the king side, in a way. So this light square bishop is taken out. Queen takes. Queen c2, we see f5 anyway. Okay, can black get away with this? Well, Fisher takes off a pair of rooks and now plays a very interesting defensive style move. Can you guess if I give you five seconds to pause the video? Okay. Fisher plays actually kind of a radical solution, g4. Do you want to encourage the tension release in here, in this position? We see f takes. Knight f6 was also a playable move, not too bad. And f takes is not bad, actually, in theory. Queen takes. Okay, there's pressure on e5 here. And we see here knight f6. Now, queen takes e5. And now here is a f the first really significant mistake, actually. Queen takes d5 is played. This looks kind of ambitious because it's looking at f3, this unprotected piece on f3. It turns out here that actually knight e takes d5 is significantly better. As an example, if check and a knight e5, which looks dangerous, black has the resource queen e8, and actually it should be 
about equal for black. This is fine, actually, for black. So queen takes d5 has an issue with it here. That actually, it's it's a very, very subtle issue to, to actually work out. And I wonder if you can work it out. It looks like a trade of, initially, a, a trade of just f3 for e7. And what's wrong with that? Because surely the queen is, like, kind of dangerous there on f3. So we have uh, queen takes e7, queen takes f3. But guess what Fisher plays here, which kind of tactically aligns the opponent's pieces in an awkward manner for a theoretical downside. And Fisher is so good at making those theoretical downsides into reality. Can you see the key move here that White plays and the follow-up? which is so tactically powerful. If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. It's actually a check. And if you notice, you've just created a theoretical downside with this check that the bishop is aligned with the king, which means a pinnable property here has emerged. And white reinforces that aspect with a very, very powerful move now can you guess? Super powerful move in this position. If I give you five seconds to pause the video. So he's aligned the opponent's pieces such that there's a theoretical pin possibility. Yes? And now he gets onto that now with bishop d4. This is very, very powerful stuff. The queen is tied down because of the f6 pressure. Not only that, black can't play rook e8. Black played rook f8 here. If black... Had played if Bob Wade had played rookie eight, can you see what White plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, check all checks. Queen takes e8 check. Knight takes, rook takes, and then this is just mating. So yeah, the subtlety here is, you know, this is White standing better. The central control is in White's favour now. White's got a superiority of central control after this and an alignment awkward alignment of the black pieces such that they're pinnable. So white's actually stamping authority on that central file. So subtle little moves, but a great domination of the position right now. And the bishop protects b2. We see rook f8. Yeah, the queen's tied down to h3. If queen takes, then bishop takes f6. So rook f8. And now we see the queen kicked to b7. But, yeah, this loses a pawn. This loses a pawn. It loses the C, C4 pawn. If black tried queen d5, white could play bishop takes f6 as an example. And because of that unfortunate alignment, it means a check here, another piece up. And that just knocks out the defense of uh, the d5 queen. So yeah, it's Fisher basically wins a pawn now. The upshot is he's a pawn up. And this could be actually a decisive pawn to have. A decisive extra pawn. We see knight d5. And here, rook b3 with tempo. Knight b6, a bit passive for the knight. And this bishop's taken off, which weakens the king a little bit. And the queen centralizes nicely. And now another nice, powerful centralizing move, knight e3. We see rook f7. And now g5, which carries with it a, a big threat of knight g4 to h6. Black parries that with h5. Now we see another central move. So Fisher really stamping authority in the center in this game. And black really makes a, another bad mistake here, which makes things worse. Queen f3. But it's a miserable position, a pawn down here. If black played king h7, b4, yeah, white's better, but it's not as quick to win this. White's got an advantage, but it's going to be a bit of a grind still. But with queen f3, this is capitulation. It does look at uh, f2, though. Maybe there's a temptation to look at f2, to threaten f2. And maybe wanting the knight to go to d5, but guess what Fisher plays in this position if I give you five seconds here to pause the video. 
okay there's the crushing move knight g4 it opens up a protection of f2 against that threat it hits the queen it means knight h6 is on the cards and because of that that would be winning the exchange bob wade's in a desperate situation now he sacrifices his queen with h takes so fisher takes off the queen g takes is played yes it looks bad news if the rook had taken there's things like queen d8 check and taking c7 so at least the rook is protecting c7 but now queen e4 the queen's quite powerful in this position in fact and h5 with the promise of h h4 with the promise of h5 is coming along b4 on this side okay the queen's hit queen e6 knight goes back but now b5 and the game actually ended here white's got things like b6 coming if the game continued as an example rook g7 perhaps actually b6 here and then taking this off with h5 is enough to win this scenario this is super dangerous for a piece falling off or black getting uh, in other huge trouble so if here check forces the king to an unfortunate place where for example the knight could be picked up so anyway after b5 yeah that was it bob wade resigned here an interesting battle black did have a little bit of play and seemed to go wrong with some of the queen movements in particular uh, so there was a critical moment which started the issues off if we look at the critical moments it was around about here this position yeah it turned out that knight e takes d5 is the way to play it although it, it looks scary to invite you know this and this but actually you know with queen e8 it's uh it's no problem black's pieces would be nice and central there wouldn't be so many issues at all to address this is um okay yeah so yeah things started to go wrong after queen takes d5 because fisher got this curious you know this check is so powerful here this mass centralization afforded by that and this awkward configuration this theoretical downside prompted by queen e6 check so black can't parry the e file yeah and, and things started to go badly wrong after that so a very very interesting game behind the scenes there especially some interesting points to take away i think for me personally it's like trying to uh, exploit weaknesses in the opponent's position by making the worst possible theoretical configuration and the tactics flow as fisher says tactics flow from superior positions but he makes those theoretical downsides in the opponent's position as part of that for the tactics to really flow behind the scenes at least okay thanks very much hi guys if you enjoyed this video lecture you might want to get more at my course Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link, you know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.